Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Serena and I'm James and we are Life After Union and today we are talking about the biggest wound that literally all twin flames have. Watch this video. Thank you so much for being here today we are doing another video today we are talking about the biggest wound that we've come across in our collective relationship and individually in within ourselves and then we're gonna share with you near the end like how that's been actually playing out in our reality today so thank you guys so much for being here today of course if you haven't already hit the like button comment down below subscribe to our channel and then hit the little notification bell we make these videos once a week so you can stay tuned into everything that's going on in our life after union <laughs> world yes our wonderful life um and yeah just thank you guys so much for being here today and if you're looking for more support more help you can check the links down below and you can find out how you can either work with us one-on-one -on -one. um you can also get my free breaking karmic ties ebook which literally details everything you need to know about breaking karmic ties how to go about doing that and literally like how you can transform your own personal karma to get closer to union so if you'd like to check that out links are in the description and without further ado let's get into the video so <laughs> drum roll yes what is the biggest wound that both of us has faced accepting help from our partner yes so we like to label this in the twin flame community <laughs> as the receiving wound um, and so we say that this is literally the biggest wound that we've come across and that all twin flames have, right? So like almost every twin flame is going to have a receiving wound of some sort because that's actually the thing that prevents us to, from getting to union. Um, and it can be from things like believing we're not worthy of having this type of a relationship or this type of a partner or thinking that, you know, we aren't enough just within ourselves, so we need to change some part of ourself in order to be worthy. Like, it can come in a number of different ways, and even both of us experience it and perceive it in different ways. Yeah. Um, but we both had to do a lot of work around this to even get to union. So what are some of the things that you dealt with prior to, like, during our separation phase? Um, during our separation phase, especially the fact that you weren't anywhere nearby, I had to come to terms with the fact that I might not see you again and that if that was going to be the case, it's actually all right because we really built such a bond as it was in the time we had spent together and the time we had conversed over WhatsApp and all the rest. Uh, so a big thing for me was letting go of the fact that if I don't see you again, it would be okay. Obviously, everything in me wanted to see you again and I'm really glad that I did because, I mean, look where we are now. But there was a part of me that really had to learn how to let go of this attachment that if i don't see you again you know things might fall apart and well however you want to try word it um so that that was that was a really big part for me was just understanding that if it doesn't work out it's actually okay and that i think i've built up from different relationships over the years where i mean you know i'm very much the kind of person that i'll put my everything into it because i believe if i don't do that then I will never really know if it was actually ever going to work out. Yeah. So I, I actually have to put the time and energy and effort entirely from myself that I feel satisfied at the end of the day, if it does or does not work. And part of that is about letting go of the fact that it might not. And if it doesn't, yes, it's going to hurt. But you know what, what you gain and learn from that, from all your previous relationships, whether it be with your comic partner or other relationships as well, <laughs> Those things are all very beneficial to helping you learn how to actually let go and start to receive more than anything else and not try to take, but actually allow things to come to you. Yeah, that's a really good point. And this, you guys, so I've actually broken down, and this is something that I take like anybody that I work with, and I'm also writing an ebook on this. So the Breaking Karmic Ties ebook that I came out with, that is just one step on like a seven step uh, process that pretty much like all twin flames will go through. And this ebook is like a distillation of like every person that I've ever talked to and like my own journey um, and what we've worked through and like all these relational tools. So I am working on that. So just know that if you're interested in literally like this path to union book, 
if you sign up for the free ebook, you will instantly get an email when that get, comes out. So it's, it's a mix of like channeled material, but then also like my experience and all the other twin flames that I've worked with experiences. So if you're interested in that, sign up for the free ebook and then you'll get notified when that comes out. But what you're bringing up is a really important step. Um, it's one of the steps literally in this system, <laughs> which is giving and receiving from a place of neutrality, right? And this is why I think as you're saying, like this is part of the receiving wound is because you had to make sure that you were okay if things didn't work out, yeah. which means you're both giving and receiving from a place of neutrality, from a place of like, I'm secure within myself. And so like, if things don't work out, then that's okay. I'm still whole. I'm still complete. And <laughs> you're not expecting something, right? And I think this is where a lot of twin flames, like with the receiving wound, can get caught up um, is because we give and we give with the expectation of receiving something back. And so it's really interesting. I didn't think about this before we started talking about it, but the receiving <laughs> wound can kind of go both ways. And yeah. the receiving wound can go can go both ways in terms of giving and receiving, right? Because giving and receiving are two different sides of the same coin, really. Um, and a lot of people say like giving is receiving. And I find this a lot actually with Claire. Like when I'm really giving love to her from an unconditional place, it feels so good. And I'm actually receiving love. Right. Because love is essentially this force that exists everywhere all the time. Right. So we're when we're giving love from an unconditional place, what we're really doing is just tapping into that force, tapping into that highest expression of what we can really feel as humans. Right. Um, and so, as you had said, like coming to that security within yourself, like, OK, if this doesn't happen, and I think you did a really good job of that because I was so concerned, I think, <laughs> during the separation phase. Like, what if this doesn't turn into something? What if something never happens? So I think also me prompting that also helped you move to that place. But it also helped you reassure me because you yeah. gave so much during that time. And you guys, he gave so much to me, like even when I was in my other relationship, like for that that time that I was still with somebody else. But like you were there, you still were giving me that love and support, even though I was with somebody else. You guys, we, this is just like a fun little fact. We even scheduled a call on Christmas. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I, and I had to ask like my other partner, like not permission, but I had to say like, Hey, look, like, are you okay if I do this, if I have this call with this person? And that's just a funny aside, you know, like that, <laughs> that you were still willing to talk to me while I was with somebody else. Cause that's, that's the epitome of like giving without expecting anything in return. And like you said, like <laughs> I was halfway across the world for most of our separation and neither of us really knew, was this going to turn into anything, you know? So there yeah. was there was always that, like, we are just giving each other this love because it feels good, like, in the moment. Um, and not because, like, we're expecting, you know, I'm not expecting you to come here. I wasn't expecting you to come here. So it was like this this free flow of energy. And that's something you really kind of have to almost master, I think, before getting to union. You have to be you know, really secure in yourself in that way. Um, and I think the receiving wound shows up in a lot of different ways, you know. So, for example, we'll talk about what we've been going through, like, right now. And as you guys, if you watch a lot of our videos, you know that, like, we always talk about this thing where one of us will go through something and then very <laughs> shortly later, like, the other person will go through it. Like, to a yeah. freaky similar <laughs> level, you know, like, to a freaky similar level. And I'm always looking out for these things. So a lot of time it's me saying like, oh, hey, like that's like what I went through. Or like you're going through like what I went through. <laughs> um, but when I gave birth, right, obviously I had, you know, like wounds and tears and soreness and without getting too much into it, you know, just was <laughs> not feeling great after giving birth. And, you know, I felt so insecure about the fact that like I couldn't do things for myself. Like I couldn't even, you know, get up in the morning and make myself toast, you know, or like my body was so drained, so exhausted. Like you made my breakfast for like the first month at least. Um, and dinner. And well, yeah, of course every <laughs> meal, but like, you know, my breakfast is usually like, that's my thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm usually the breakfast maker because you don't really eat breakfast very often. So True. the fact that you literally like did that for me, like, you know, really made me feel super insecure. And so that's where my receiving wound came up because I think about my partner and I'm like, well, I love him so much and he does so much for me already. Like it's hard to receive more. 
but you also have to understand like the more you're open to receiving and the more you allow in the more you actually get you know so it's kind of funny the way it works because sometimes we think like oh we can't receive mm -hmm. because then we're that makes us like you know not worthy if and a lot of times we feel guilty for receiving like because we're like oh they shouldn't be doing that for me or whatever and then you feel guilty about it and then you actually aren't receiving receiving with gratitude is actually the highest expression of all of that um but do you want to talk about what you've been going through recently um yeah well let's just touch on your point i mean i know for at least from from my side i don't know you can tell me if you feel the same about this or not but a lot of times for me I mean, I, I, I do like receiving, but I don't like receiving from a place where I feel like it's something that I can't do in this very moment. Because that, that's where I find, for myself at least, that's where the wound hits the hardest. Because I don't want to have to rely on you to do something for me that I should be able to do for myself. But in that moment, I might not be able to. Like now, it's previously where I had my little bit of infection and I couldn't really do much. I was kind of couch bound, which was... For me, I, I, I don't like being stuck. I love relaxing, doing nothing, but I like to choose to do that. I don't like being forced to do that. I felt guilty because there were things that normally I can do for myself without having to really think about it. It's just natural things, but because I wasn't I wasn't mobile meant that I, well, I was mobile, but I didn't, I was meant to be kind of staying stationary, not doing a lot because obviously my, my infection. <laughs> Thanks, Bubba. Um, so it was difficult for me in that sense that now I was in this place where I was so used to giving so much to you. And even though I receive a lot from you, this was in the space where I felt it was things I necessarily shouldn't be receiving from me in that moment because there's things that I felt I should just be able to do. Um, so that, that was difficult to, to, to find that place and find that, that ability to receive in those moments because... <laughs> hey... <laughs> You're making my life very difficult. <laughs> I love you. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a hard place to have to kind of... <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was a hard place for me to be. Um, I, I'm very much kind of person I like to give more than I receive, but a lot of times in order to actually give to somebody, you actually have to allow sometimes them to give you something back. And in order to receive you had to open yourself up and th there's many different levels for this. It's not just kind of one thing or the other, or it's a gen big generalization. I feel like th there's multiple different levels within receiving for certain circumstances. Um, and it's something that we constantly work on. I mean, now obviously we're in a much better place and obviously I, I learned to receive everything I was meant to during that time. And I did a lot of work through myself in that because that work never stops, but that doesn't mean that that's not going to come up at a later stage again. It might still come up again on a different level within the same circumstances. Yeah. No, I think that's true. And what advice would you give somebody that has this receiving wound that like, you know, isn't comfortable with allowing other people in or allowing other people to do things for them or, you know, X, Y, Z. You can have a partner you trust fully. It doesn't mean it's going to be any easier to trust that person with these things. But to build... Right, because it doesn't come down to you and your partner at the end of the day. It actually comes down to you, right? Or like the yeah. person. It comes down to the person and your stories around receiving, not necessarily the person you're with in this moment. So when having your partner and someone you really trust, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy in order to actually receive these things. And a lot of the times when you get to those moments, you actually look within yourself and be like, okay, well, why am I struggling with this at the moment? And what's a way that I can maybe move forward to this. And it doesn't have to be that you have to express every little thing to that person in that moment immediately. You can do it by literally like drip feeding and putting a little bit here and a little bit here and just say to your partner, like I mean, I said to you as well, I said, this is areas where I struggle with. So I might be a little bit slow with this, but I'm going to feed it to you as I feel comfortable. And as I feel more comfortable, I'll feed you more and more and more. And just to build it slowly. I think a lot of people have this, this idea that when you go to share with somebody, you just got to dump everything in one go and be done with it. It doesn't work. Well, no, it doesn't. Sometimes it might work that way. But a lot of the times, at least for myself personally, I struggle with that. So it's, for me, I prefer to slowly kind of, like I said, drip feed it to you and little bits at a time. But make sure you're aware of this is why I'm doing it and this is what I'm doing. Because if you don't know, then it doesn't help either. So just say like, this is what I'm want to do right now i don't know how it's going to come out i don't know when it's going to come out but this is how i'd like to process through it 
and then you go you're like okay i've said my piece and i can carry on with with what i need to so one of the things that i think is most important to focus on when you're you know either in separation or even in union when you are dealing with the receiving wound is literally pouring that love also into yourself right mm. because you're not going to be able to receive from somebody else if you can't receive from yourself and a lot of times right this feeling of guilt because your partner is doing something for you or this feeling of guilt when others help you that comes from a place of not feeling worthy, right? And so you have to actually deal with that on an inside level. If you do even end up receiving it from somebody else, you either won't be able to accept it, you won't believe that they're being sincere or genuine, yeah. or you just literally like will feel so guilty about it, you won't even be grateful. And then you're not even receiving at the end of the day, right? Like if you can't fully take in what something is giving you, even if it's the universe, if the universe gives you something, and you can't fully take that in, you'll never recognize it as receiving. You won't actually see how much you are gaining from the universe, from source, from spirit, from your partner, from the world around you, if you're not grateful for it. So being grateful for gaining something is actually like a prerequisite for even recognizing it as something that's coming to you. So I think that's really, really important too, is, is one, you know, giving that to yourself first. And then two, being a little bit more grateful for the things that are coming your way. Even if you can't see in the moment, like why this is benefiting you, you can still be grateful for something. And then you might see why it's coming to you, you know? So that element of gratitude, I think is really important. And we have both struggled with this, where one or the other person does something for us and we actually feel guilty you know which is so silly as well it's super silly but then it also what we have found is it makes the other person actually not want to give to you that much right because especially in the twin flame dynamic we're mirrors to each other right so if i'm feeling unworthy and i ask you to do something to me you will actually roll your eyes or you'll make a face or you'll be like oh you know and he'll reflect back to me <laughs> my own unworthiness and the same is true for you when you ask me to do something but with like a slight air of guilt or like I'm feeling bad about this I'll be like man he's so inconveniencing me right now you know or I'll feel some type of way about it <laughs> that I actually don't feel just because he's already feeling scared to ask me about it or he's already feeling guilty about receiving it but it's like one of those things when we sat down about your infection right and I sat down and I said look you could do all of these things for yourself but it would probably further injure you or make you feel worse, right? Yeah. So it's not, receiving is not about, can I do this? Can I not do this for myself, right? Receiving is about, do I want to, right? And when you have a partner, part of that like point of having a partner is literally to make your life easier, right? So if we aren't willing to give to each other in that way, then what is absolutely the point? Then we're just literally reliving single alone life all over again right and that's a programming i've had that's been coming up for me really strongly lately is like this feeling of um james is never there when i need him that's been coming up for me really strong and we've spoken about it like multiple times yeah but you guys it's nothing more than a program because he is actually here for me emotionally physically he may not be like in that exact moment but then when I run that story in that moment, does it make me feel better? No. Does it make me feel more supported? No. So we have to check where our receiving stories are too. Like what stories do we have around receiving? They're never there for me when I need. And these are all coming from childhood, right? So like this person's never there for me when I need them. That's a parent wound for sure. Like my parent wasn't there when I needed them, um, you know? I'm not worthy unless I do X, Y, Z. I have this a lot. So when I was a kid, my parents gave me more love when I was sick or not doing well. So now I feel great receiving. Like if I'm laid out on the couch, I feel great <laughs> receiving. I'm like, yes, do this for me. Do that for me. You know, like whatever it is, because that's when my parents gave me more love. Um, but if it's just like a day to day basis and I'm doing fine and I'm doing great, then I don't want to receive anything from anybody because I was never taught how to do that. So you have to look at your childhood and look at your programming and look at where these wounds are coming from and where they originated, you know, um, and then that will give you a good clue to where you feel comfortable receiving from others and where you don't and where your edge of expansion is in that space. Anything else to say? I think ultimately just 
try be open as much as you can and allow it to come in at the pace that it comes. Um, it sometimes might feel too fast, but that's also okay because it does. It's never going to be always exactly as you want when you want it. But you just need to be open to understanding that when it does come in, it's your choice whether you want to receive it or not. And to receive it is not a difficult thing to actually do. It's just a difficult thing sometimes to overcome. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, put them down below. Any questions, put them down below. Again, if you'd like to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, you can check the links in the description. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here today. Big love. Bye. Bye.